Good morning, thank you. It's really been a pleasure. Um, I didn't get to enjoy last night with all of you, but it's been a real pleasure, so thank you. I really don't want to preface uh, my, my video, so let's take a look. How do I say something I've never said before? You know those things that live inside? They actually do all the work, but they never get airtime. And they're never told why to silently hide, shy, let alone die. As if there's some kind of martyr sacrifice in their quiet. See, how do I say something I've never said before when the difference is being locked out of my own house or breaking and entering in my own door? When I begin, my voice is low because my ears are scared to hear what is whole from my soul. I thought I had been eating, but I was just snacking on my own sound bites, curving my appetite, and relearning hunger again. You know, the kind of healthy that looks like sick when it first begins. The kind of process of change that makes getting better feel like sin. So when I begin, my voice is low, but I have to keep going. Making noise that employs a thick soul, appetizing aroma to my nose, muscle sticks to bone, proteins that are grown, a new routine. My ears expecting nine course meals of self and divine, so much to chew on they have toned jaw bones and leftovers for the ride. A body that hungers and feasts on my articulation of speech. Noise that sounds an echo letting me know who I am and how it will be food for the weak. And sure, an, an echoless chamber puts creation in a hearse, but can my lack of sound still manage to be worse? So when my voice gets shaky because it will and vocal cords weak, I'll clear my throat, remember to breathe and start again. Because I already began and beginning again is our very hope for the end. We become what we already know, and we hear the bifurcation point of our own echo. Maybe that's why God got loud. Knowing volume is more than its inevitable sound, maybe that's why God keeps quiet. Knowing that light is more than its inevitable night. We see what we truly believe in our feeble moments of chosen creativity, creator, constructor, conductor, friend, bending metal minds and sound to welcome us in. And here I am in the middle of a thought, but the proliferation of my voice only begins. I can still hear my mother say, oh, please excuse the mess when we invited over guests. And as I come home to myself, whether through a door or window, I can't help but wonder if I'm obsessed with the clutter on my shelves and desk, what's behind closed doors, if there's a pathway up the steps, I hear my mother's voice. The same one that says, I love you to me constantly, redundantly, but still. Your mess is excess, clean it up or apologize to your guests. I remember my dad saying, hey, look at that tree. Why don't all the leaves fall at once? Do you think they could if they want? Dad, I have to confess, I don't even do what I want. My lack of control is always three steps ahead while I'm two steps behind. My polished house stands nonchalant, but nonetheless, I want what I want. What do you think of my mess? Because this ontology of apology is haunting my house. I've been locking the door, keeping them out, cleaning the floors, hiding my doubt. I don't want to keep apologizing for what they'll find out in me anymore. I want them to see what they see and choose not to leave. Not confident of knowing me, but content with me just to be. And thankfully, this house is not made of concrete. You can huff and puff and blow it down. Matter of fact, I'm the one with scary teeth and a voice like wind that'll tear it down. I have new words to build up from the ground, brick 
by brick, line by line, time after time. I'm building my home, old ground, newly owned. Thank you. Um, in an effort to allow art to be what art is, I'm not particularly interested in um, presenting the questions that have arose in me in uh, a long process of reflection and uh, learning of myself and being a part of Dr. Reichel's course on Theologies of Order and Chaos. Um, but I thought I might tell you a, a little story. So I talked to Dr. Reichel about just a particularly interesting time I had uh, in her course this past semester in, in having a difficulty to, to talk, to speak, um, and in discussing like how I was personally processing through what was it about this space or this subject matter um, that made it hard for me to feel like uh, I had a voice to share or to utilize in real time. Um, thought it would be worthwhile to use such a media, uh, something that I've been doing in the past, to reflect on theologies of order and chaos. Um, so it was really with a heart that was uh, completely personal um, and very much spiritual in reflecting on, you know, what is voice? What is it in my life? And we talked a good amount about the beginning of Genesis in Dr. Reichel's class and what does it mean potentially that God had interest in hearing God's own voice. Um, so it's from these sorts of places in me that this rose up, and I'm, I'm mostly interested in um, the way this uh, display of creative voice has a way of creatively and uniquely uh, bringing questions up in each of you um, and thoughts, particularly in what this larger conference is interested in, but also um, maybe otherwise. I was mostly, you know, thinking about uh, voice and I had, you know, kind of ideas of home and, and these different kinds of <laughs> homes we have, what it means to actively build such a space, um, and particularly when these different levels of order and chaos are very much uh, inevitable. That was my conclusion, at least.